Okay, there we go. We got live stream. We got live stream. Hey, everybody. All right. Um, so hello. All right. I'm gonna try and get uh, get things going here so we can. Okay. There we go. See, turn that off. We got live stream. <laughs> there we are. Okay. All righty. We are up and running. There we go. So, um, just wanted to uh, welcome you guys to Tooltip Tuesday, Little Metal Foxes. Hello. And it is uh, January 10th here in Seattle, uh, 2023. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what year is it? New year. I know. It's like, what year is it? 23. Oh my gosh. Um, so, welcome. Uh, I've got Michelle Lear and Chris Anderson from Lion Punch Forge and the Airworks. Um, and uh, we've got some new stuff from both of you guys to talk about tonight. And oh, yeah. I am super freaking excited. Michelle, you're going to be teaching a class with little metal boxes coming up on, oh, what I just was looking at. February 18th and 25th. Right. And that's going to yes. be the basics with the, the frames, the new frames. Yeah, so if somebody just wants to learn the filigree part, they can absolutely do that. Um, they could even, if they just want to take the class for the filigree part, they're going to learn all that right. as well. Um, the soldering stencils give us a chance to uh, save a little bit of time because we're not going to be sitting here making frames or making the outside shape. We'll be able to just use the soldering stencil and then work on learning how to put the filigree inside of it. But right. all of the techniques can be switched and changed and you could use granulation, you could use all sorts of different things. Like the stuff that you would learn isn't just solely meant for filigree or just meant for one particular thing. It can be used in a lot of different ways. So I want people to know that it's not so specific that they can't take it a completely different direction if they wanted to. So what, what are these stencils and how did they come about? Good question. Chris, do you want me to answer or do you want to answer? Um, why, don't, uh, why don't you start off with the historical kind of traditional use of them? And then uh, I can jump in for the, the adoption. modernization of, of the concept. Okay, great. Um, so I had on my list, I did a lot of my research on YouTube or I go down rabbit trails of hashtags, looking at traditional filigree artists in all sorts of places. There's one place specifically that I love spending a lot of time watching videos of, and that's um, in Mompox, Colombia, which is a little filigree district that has, I say little, but it has multiple generations going back hundreds of years, if not a thousand years. Um, of filigree artists where they like pass down their traditions. And one of the things I saw them doing was taking brass or copper or whatever non-ferrous metal they had available. And they would create frames that they would then put all of their filigree pieces in and solder them together to create these sort of like open work or kind of lace like looking pieces. And I'd been thinking about, okay, I wanna experiment with this. Wanna look at making some frames. But then I always come back to, I'm going to be trying to create these perfect triangles or these perfect, you know, squares, and I'm going to be using these really thick wires. So then I've got the heat sink, and then I've got all of these other things happening, and then they get really soft every time I solder with them. And so then I'm going to have to deal with like bowing or shifting. And so about, what was it, like a year ago, Chris, we started talking about it, and yeah, I was like, that can we make these in titanium? <laughs> we were trying to figure out, could we make them in titanium wire? Because titanium is strong. It doesn't get soft when you work with it on your soldering bench. Um, and it doesn't transfer heat the same way as other metals. And so it creates less of a heat sink. And then the solder also doesn't stick to it. So we couldn't really, we had... Chris ordered titanium wire. I think what is it, like 16 gauge titanium yeah, wire? Got some 14 gauge and some 16 gauge. And we we're going to play around with cutting them to lengths, bending them, welding them together, and then creating these forms. And 
just like uh, so Michelle and I both have taken uh, the Little Metal Foxes jewelry production class series that you you did. And right. for for those folks who may not be familiar with production work, you try and make everything that you possibly can faster mm -hmm. in the way that you can possibly make it faster. So by hand forming all of the different shapes, that's not necessarily the most efficient way of doing that if you're wanting to put out a production product. Um, like in Michelle's work, a lot of her, her frames are cast and then the casting ends up creating that uh, production element mm -hmm. so that she can move her workout faster. So and do more filigree and less filing. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh. So what we tried to do was come up with a way that allowed for the ideal production product without necessarily having to hand make every single one of them. So what I ended up doing was kind of take advantage of, uh, I, I do a lot of uh, laser cutting. Uh, I have a, an outsource company that I use for laser cutting. And what they do is they do my laser cutting of metals. It takes a fiber laser. Uh, I won't go into the laser terminology, but a fiber laser is the, mo the more powerful of, of the lasers and it's able to cut and engrave metals. With being able to design these filigree frames, as you can see in the, the picture there, the bottom, let me get a, get a finger in there, Jennifer. Oh, that right? Point to it. I'm trying. Point. Oh, dear. there we go. I'm trying to get yeah, it. It's, the, it's the struggle bus. Yeah. Right. Now, right? Come on. And there we go. Yeah. We go. So, <laughs> hey there. So, what you're seeing there are these laser cut titanium soldering stencils that are uniform shapes based on the design that we make in CAD, uh, CAD computer aided drafting. And I can prototype a design in CAD and then price it out to see whether or not it's going to be something that'll be, um, we want to try and keep them affordable. So, mm -hmm. because they're not necessarily a hundred percent a consumable, like something else would be, because you can use these over and over and over again, but we want to try and keep our costs down low enough to where they're accessible. So if it's a, if it's a, you know, a hundred, a hundred dollar tool for six patterns. It doesn't, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to try and market it that, that way. Um, so we were able to get our price for these things down to about, is it at 39 or $41 a set for six stencils. Mm -hmm. So they're made from uh, titanium, a grade five titanium, which is um, it has a mixture of titanium and aluminum. Uh, it creates a nice, strong tool that, um, so like Michelle had mentioned uh, about heat sinking. I was going to say, yeah. So heat sinking is um, the bane of our existence when it comes to soldering and fusing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, right. Titanium operates in a slightly different way than other non-ferrous metals in that it it doesn't like to share. It doesn't like to share its warmth with the rest of the titanium. So if you heat up a piece of titanium on one side, you're going to get a limited heat transfer to other parts of that titanium because it doesn't, it doesn't like to it's, thermodynamically, it doesn't like to share heat. Yeah. So it doesn't transfer well, well. Yeah. One of the things I know um, about working with it when it comes to like the baskets uh, um, and using the titanium basket jigs, yeah. They um, they have been brilliant for putting together shapes and forms and constructions, holding the tension without changing. Yeah. And that they don't act like a heat sink like a lot of other contraptions like tweezers and things will do, which can be a benefit sometimes as well. But yeah. sometimes you just want to heat it up really evenly. And I noticed that the titanium allows you to do that without... Um, distorting warping without me, you know, weirdness going on, and um, and you can you know, pick it all up and quench it all. So, yeah. and it's all fine afterwards. The other the other part of titanium is that one you can quench it without worrying about 
excessively hardening it or changing the molecular properties of it too much. Right. right. And it's a neutral element for dropping in the pickle. Right. So well, um, with these, um, you were talking about the shapes, Michelle, with like the triangles yes. and the, the geometrics. And I think I think I've got the curves and the geometrics here, right, Chris? Uh, you yeah, you have some of the looks like you have some of the prototypes and you have a couple of the production models there. Right, yeah. So um, so with the um, with the shapes, one of the things that I noticed that when I started playing with it a little bit and sort of you know stacking some wire in is that it's taller than I thought it was because they're so light and the frames are mm -hmm. um, designed to be like the height you would use for filigree, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. But because it's titanium, I didn't realize how high the border actually is. And it's just right for doing my filigree. It's just exactly the right height. So, so the, the thickness I use is 0 0.06, 0 0.03 of an inch, I yeah. believe. And I think the the one that we're that we're coming out with on Saturday is the 0 0.06 inch, that's which right. was the light. Is that the hearts or which one is that? No, that's, no, that's the, the uh, ring template. <gasps> the ring template. <laughs> Yeah, the ring, the, at least the prototype I have in front of me is 1.7 millimeters and the soldering stencil originals are 1.1 tall. Yeah, so tell me about the ring stencil or the ring jig. So yeah, gonna, real quick before my... we go that direction, um, yeah. one thing that is unique about Chris and I and a lot of other metalsmiths, especially and goldsmiths, especially those that have really taken advantage of like our isolation and COVID season is we've had a lot of time to experiment. And some of the things we do are, we're not traditionally trained. We either because we didn't have the opportunity or we're just like in our workshops, ignoring the world and <laughs> making things like mad scientists. Right. Yeah. Um, and so we don't, I specifically, and I say we, because I talk to Chris a lot, we don't have the same, like, rules around how we use our tools as maybe other people would be that are kind of more like linear in thought or this tool is just used for this and I know you guys talk about that a lot in your classes like here's a tool that you you can use over here and so we're constantly looking at how we're making things and thinking what could we create to make this job easier it's like a game almost all the time in our head how could we change this. I have this problem that like every time I solder things move across my soldering board, you know, and I need like something to like <laughs> stop things, you know, so we're always talking yeah. about how we can take something from a different field, from a different arena of goldsmithing and alter it or change it and move it over here. And I would say like every once in a while we get someone that's like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> Don't do no no. Do not, listen, do not listen to those people. I've had and so I'm many. Like, people, yes, yes, yes. I've had so many people <laughs> in my life that are that are that are so they have like this negative mindset about things need to be done in a certain way. Do not step outside of that box because you'll get hurt. You'll fall off the edge of the world. And it's like I would say we still need people like that. Some of yeah. those personality. And thank you so much for those of you that are like. Do not step off that cliff. Yeah, yeah. But there's we also, still need them. there's, I mean, fear, fear at a certain level is a good thing, you know, because it keeps us alive. However, there's, there's a certain amount of drive, innovation, creativity that is about that risk taking and about being able to think outside the box, whether it comes to jewelry design or, you know, race car design or whatever you're doing. And, you know, if you're not, if you're constantly making a band ring, like you were taught to make an intro, all you're ever going to make is the band ring that you made an intro. And you might make a great band ring at a certain point. You might have made a thousand of them, but there's nothing innovative about that, really, if you're still doing the same band ring. Um, so being able to, I think, think outside the box and it's like, you know what, I'm going to make a square ring. I'm going to make a triangular ring. I'm going to make a ring that, you know, has stuff coming off of it. And, sits on two fingers or, you know, whatever, you know, it's, it's being able to, I think, think outside the box that allows you to, to be able to find solutions to things that most people have taken for granted 
for a long time. But if you saw our bucket of prototypes. <laughs> oh yeah. That, I mean, Chris was just saying he threw like all of his prototypes and it like <laughs> fills up a bucket, you know, <laughs> like stuff that we've tried. Like I have two ring band templates in front of me that are like versions of our prototypes. Um, right. And if you're not okay with the process and sometimes I'm not okay with it. I just want to skip the three or four or five prototypes and go straight to the like, let's make this better and let's do that before we do everything else. And that doesn't work like that. You just, you can't, can't you have can't to have that process. Sometimes yeah. I'm a little bit of a voice of reason for, for that. <laughs> the, the rock to wind her string around. Is that yeah. <laughs> and, or something like, don't put a hole in that. Or why are you putting a hole hey, in I, it? Wait a minute. I'm the don't put a hole in it. Yeah. <laughs> and and I'm like, everything gets a hole. It's going to have a hole. Yep. Gets a hole. Yep. Got to have a hole. hole. <laughs> and then I'm like, what is it for? <laughs> Hanging <laughs> stuff. To attach a fun little chain. To attach them together so you don't lose them. <laughs> why? Yeah. Well, um, okay. So okay, when, the ring band. The ring band. Yeah. So tell me about that. Chris, your turn to talk. Yeah. So I'm uh, I'm adjusting my camera here. I think I have it upside down. I do. <laughs> there here we you are. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to try not to tip my phone over. So this guy is the current iteration and what is going to be the production model of the ring band. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And I'll just start off with the 10 different positions it can go into. Um, so I've made it same thing out of titanium. The teeth like to bind, which is good because they'll stay in, in place. You don't want to like bend back and forth. You want to just kind of rock it out, mm -hmm. but essentially you have what I'll refer to for this as position one. It's that first notch and you have this nice thin little line there. And what I envision this one for is taking granulation or balls, laying them in there, and then fusing them together to make your beaded wire. Well, even for using it for something like soldering two wires together or soldering, yeah. you know, just right. keeping just something as straight in place. Holding, where you're... holding twisted wire. Yeah, okay. yeah. Right. So then you take it up one tooth. That's not one tooth. And you have, let's drop it into place. Straight down. Straight down. Is doing this. So while he's doing that, I'm going to say how this started. This started with wanting to make rectangles because we use a lot of rectangles in pendants, in bangles, in earrings, in, you know, rings. And I was like, well, could we create something? that could be adjustable because we've got this nice long shape that can be used for so many different things. How can we make this so that our width can change depending on what we're making and it's still all one tool? And one of Chris and I both have these pet peeves of tools that only do one thing. And it's like, yeah. well, I like your tool, but can it do other things? You know, right. like I don't want to spend the money on something that only does one thing ever, you know? So there was a lot of different thought that went into this, why there's so many different prototypes. There's little holes in the corners and those holes are for wig pins or T-pins. So you can attach it right down onto your soldering surface. Or for me, I use a honeycomb. You can right. stick your T-pin and it. I think we have T-pins that we are going to include in it. Uh, that, how about that? Oh, yeah. no. The holes are a little bit too small for the ones that I purchased. So, um, yeah. Right, so this right might now still be a prototype? Well, I think I think eventually we'll we'll include the T-pens with it. But for now, it'll be a... Uh, uh, it'll, so you'll need I to find, use um, bailing wire. Um, yeah. Binding or wire. Finger. <laughs> well, you can so. get uh, T-pins, quilt pins and things like that from Joanne Fabrics and all kinds of places. So. Oh, yes. yeah. As long as you get the thinner ones, they'll fit in there. It's just the ones. the ones that I got. So the ones, the T-pins you ordered are thicker than the holes that we put in. Exactly. Is that what you're saying? So, okay. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a, a game or a, uh, like game over type thing. It's just I need to find ones that'll fit. 
Got it. So yep. use, um, use, you can use your um, binding wire or anything that can just go right straight down through that hole and attach to your surface underneath. Um, and that way you can set it up differently. Like what we had talked about was if you were using like really long wires and you need it to go all the way across, you can do the two pieces back to back. Oh, nice. Okay. Right. So that you, so that you can go right through the end. So right. Yeah. Hold, Cause I well, and, frequently and again, try to like, that's really great for soldering like two wires together. Yeah. Because a lot of times you they want to roll. And if you've got something you can I up. have struggled that with that so many times. Like yeah. trying to get them next to each other. I work with Argentium a lot, um, which most people know has some germanium in it, and it will it will crumble if you put pressure on it. Right. So right. sticking something heavy on the top, either creating a heat sink or creating a, a weight that's gonna crum make it crumble. Right. It doesn't work. And so what I end up doing usually is just like soldering one spot <laughs> and then like trying to like squeeze them together. Uh, right. <laughs> whether it's like manually or something. Yeah. Without it breaking. All the way down. Yeah. Um, Argentium will, if it's hot, it will, if you put any pressure on it, will come, a, come apart like a hot cheesecake. It just sort of goes, you know, and you it can does. See it crumbles. all the grain yeah. boundaries and everything on the inside. The mm -hmm. nice thing is you can, put it put it back together usually but it is quite a little jigsaw puzzle if you do and kind of looks crappy so yeah not doing that in the first place is usually the better way to go but um with um do you have some of the examples that you have of the, the ones that you've done with this michelle i don't have a torch at the moment no I mean, uh, my, some, finished, some finished ones some finished pieces that are without i don't right now Okay. I'm going to be <laughs> we have some pictures. as soon as my yeah, yeah we as have soon pictures as my it. regulator gets set up and the ring band is coming. We were working on this over Christmas. And Do you have some of the other samples of the borderless filigree though? I have some photos that I can show you. I sold the things that I have. Yeah. Do you want to share stock. the screen? Um, give me a few minutes to pull some things out that are okay, like sure. yeah. borderless pieces. I'll, uh, I'll kind of go into this little center yeah, bar here. The, yes. Yeah. So that little, what we ended up doing is that, so the center bar can be flipped one way or the other. Right. And when this is all the way down, you have two elongated rectangles. Right. Or if you bring it up a little bit taller you have basically something that you can look if i had we're, we're pretending this is wire okay. and if i had my wire going in i could use that as a bend point for oh my interesting and i could end up either using this as another frame for two wires or a wavy type of bracelet or ring or whatever I wanted to do bracelets a little bit too big but um since this does go up and down this can act as a center or a bend point for a wire and then the other side of it is because I've designed it with these teeth these teeth are repeatable in that in CAD I can take this tooth design and eventually we can do shaped oh okay so that uh, add-on accessory later on would be a another center bar with maybe a different curve. shape or yeah. some sort of curve oh yeah so then you could just buy like the center bar or something yeah. exactly so the product cool. itself would be uh, you could build on it cool well i have a couple of questions um so we've got ghost town metal works hello uh carrie byfield hello carrie and um uh carrie's question is uh well, you have video showing how to use this ring stencil. We've got the class coming up. I don't know if you're going to use it in that, Michelle. I am going to be using probably one of the shapes, okay. but um, either we'll touch on the ring. If somebody, that's what they want to do. Yeah. Um, I won't be demonstrating how to make a ring, but I will be demonstrating the skills to be able to solder and do filigree within the frame. And I can answer questions. We'll right. have a question and answer time 
I'd be happy to help people with that if that's something that they want to do. But we won't be doing step by step specifically just the ring one. Well, and that might be something for the future to consider. Yes. Yes. So, um, Chris, do you have, de- are you going to have demos? Because you do usually add some of those to your website or to your uh, YouTube channel with uh, yeah, yeah. videos. Pop my, pop my camera back over here real fast so I can look at you guys. Uh, there we go. Hey, it's me. Hello there. So, Ghost Town Metalworks said that the pricing is super reasonable. Yay. And really looking forward to the, um, the ring band too, but she says, yes, on the holes, it needs to be hung. <laughs> so, so a lot of you don't know, Jennifer, uh, Michelle, Charity with Ghost Town Metalworks, um, and a whole herd of other uh, really awesome people are of the product. It's a big of as a pack. Or, what's that? <laughs> like, I like pack. Or pack. pack. <laughs> Entire pack of really mm-hmm. awesome people um, are part of the Line Punch Ford product team. And so they end up getting samples and get feedback on new products and all that kind of stuff. So um, there will be lucky enough to have you guys teach too, which is really nice. So yeah, yeah, I'd love to have like the name board and and, uh, those guys teaching too. That'd be great. So So when, uh, when the, Michelle's going to try and work on some uh, like reels and some Instagram type videos for the ring stencil. Um, I'm getting ready to leave for Tucson. So I'm not going to have a whole lot of time before then to get a YouTube video out. Where are you going to be in Tucson? We're going to shout out. I'm going to be at the True Blue Colors of the Stone show at Casino del Sol. And I'll be there uh, for about two weeks. It's a week long show, but I'll be there for two weeks. Um, and I'll be hanging out and uh, selling cool. tools at the Peppy booth. Cool. And it, you, I heard you're going to have some of the uh, production release team there with you. Yeah. So Renee Ford's going to be there um, for sure with uh, Lainey Clark. Yeah. And they, so if, for those of you who don't know Renee, Renee is the soldering clay queen. And She'll be there. We're talking about that kind of stuff and just having a having a good old time. So yeah, hold it, hold it, hold it. Let's hold it is one of my secret weapons. Hold it, sorry. <laughs> like I gotta tell you, man. I use it you, all the time when you need it, man. It's well, you've been using it too for the uh, the prong things, haven't you, Jennifer? Yeah, yeah, it works great with the prong setting things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So okay, cool. What else? Uh, <laughs> this came out for prototype soon. Oh, oh, there it is. Oh, Michelle's pieces. Ooh, the, oh, yeah. Cool. Let's look at that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to blow this up. Blow it up. <laughs> blow it yeah, up. So this, this is one that I made with the, um, let's Ellipse. see if I can get my, there we go, my camera. Um. <laughs> I made this one and you saw some of the videos of it. My plan for this one is to make a backing for this setting. Lovely. So I'll create a bezel for a nice um, kind of lower bezel for my stone. And then I will solder it right onto my piece. Um, and I usually, whenever I do this, make sure that my bezel is a little bit thicker. Like, and then I kind of chamfer it so that there is some stability. But one thing to be noted is if you're doing something like this, make sure you're not doing fine silver. And you can also do a thicker, smoother wire. So there's ways that you can do these kinds of things where you can get this really nice lacy look and still have it be strong. I wouldn't just stick a few prongs on that and then call it good. Like that would not be enough. Yeah. So, But you could put like, you could could insert tubing and all kinds of things into that. Design. Yes. Yep. And when I do, when I add like tubing kind of stuff, I will actually just either cut a little spot out with a ball, um, with a ball burr that right. is the exact dimension. Um, or I will just cut a small piece out with my saw and then and then use a little bit of a ball burr and then just work it right right in there using my calipers to measure where I want it to go. So That's sweet. You can, you could actually put your tubes in with your filigree in the soldering stencil, 
occasionally, like if, especially if it's a really small tube, it can be hard to keep track of where your heat is. And if you have a smaller bezel kind of sticking up, it can be easy to forget that that's there. And sometimes you end up cutting it out and putting a new one in, which is totally fine. That happens all the time to me. It's a good way to learn. Um, yeah. but sometimes a little more expensive to learn that way. Um, okay. So this is a prototype one that I have and I'm like post Christmas, you're catching me, no masking tape, no torch. Um, <laughs> my oxygen regulator died on Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. So here's something that I was working on. There you go. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and so you can see, this was going to be a pair of earrings. And you can see I created the frame. One of the things with these frames is sometimes if you're using a thinner frame, your frame um, will flex. Yeah. So as you're putting your pieces in, you'll stick them in and then one will stick in and it'll be too big. And then it will like cause your rim to go like, like out. And now right. yeah. my, my camera likes it. Okay. Um, and now none of them are touching. And so it's a pain. So one of the things that I wanted this for as well is literally put the entire piece with the frame in the titanium because this is going to actually hold my frame as well. Yeah, um, one of the nice things I found about the, um, so I was sitting here playing with some of the, the filigree in the frame earlier, is that it's, if you're doing things like the spirals and the, um, like the peacock eye sort of things, the, uh, if the frames are flexing, it's hard to get the peacock eye and the spirals to stay where you want them. And I yes. found with these frames, because they don't flex, I could really get things lined up and compact really well. So that even was if you're not soldering with them, I'm looking for my sizing thing. Um, this is what I would use if I was trying to figure out my size. Oh, smart. And filigree or whatever you're using can always be trimmed down, but I just like to use, you can kind of estimate where you're at. Let's say I want like a, there's always going to be a little flex and a little bit of, um, you know, it, it going a little bigger when you're yeah. working with it, but that's um, so smart. I like that idea. Yeah. And then you can just start on one side and work your way over. We had talked about having a template etched right on it. And we just decided, you know what, these are like 50 cents yeah. <laughs> or right. you can get it on your ruler. So it'll be fine just to leave it. So what I'd like to do is take my pieces. You can use the sides of your tweezers like this, or if you want, you can use it in parallel pliers. Um, sometimes I'll put like a little piece Smart. of pork or a stop that's the exact um, width yeah. that I want my filigree piece to be. And so then I'll very gently squeeze my filigree piece and then it will stop at the yeah. same place every time. In um, the thing, they call that a kiss block. Perfect. That's our next tool. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So I just squeeze mine a little until it's the right shape. And I kind of do some of my prep work ahead of time, but really I'm focusing more on getting it about the right size. And I'm, I'm going to be soldering here yeah, right. and then through here. Yeah. And you can, you can just even go in when you go to solder and you just can add little flakes of solder just to those connections right there. Right. If I was going to leave this like this, I would do a much thicker wire. Yeah. I would either do a smooth wire that is a little bit flat. Um, and you, the reason why you want it a little bit flat when you're working with pieces like this is it makes it easier to shape. And then it gives you like a better connection point. If you're using two completely round wires, your connection point is not going to be as strong. Right. Um, well, and the, yeah, and it's, you want it to be, especially if it's going to be uh, a ring, you want it to be stable. You don't want it to be squishy. But if you did want to do something like this and then add it in as an inlay yeah. or, or put it onto a backing, yeah. um, this is a great way to just line it right up. Uh, one of the things that I'd like to experiment with is creating my filigree flat, shaping it, and then soldering that whole panel of filigree into a three-dimensional shape. Oh, interesting. Because 
I would like to have three dimensional shapes that I could create without the filigree and then add the filigree after. Right. But you can't, you can't add filigree to a three dimensional shape one piece at a time. That's just going to be crazy. Yeah. Without, yeah. Without having like a, a laser welder, like a beep, 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 beep. I do want one of those. Very difficult. That would be so um, nice. Yes. Uh, a, uh, oh, a friend, a friend of the foxes is uh, um, Victoria Lansford, who I love dearly. And she, she loves her three-dimensional shapes. I love her so much. And her filigree. Are we supposed to tell that secret? But that her. Oh, I think she's told it before. Okay, just checking. <laughs> one, of her, one of her favorite things. Um, but yeah, she her three-dimensional. Uh, a lot of the new stuff that she's doing, your three-dimensional stuff, she wouldn't be able to do without one. So it's, yeah, yeah you've just, you've got to find ways to be able to create the thing you want to do, you know? And if it means making and the, it cool. And that's not for like, those things are not, they're just, they're tools. They're not, they don't yeah. replace craftsmanship. Right. No, absolutely. They, absolutely. You know, sometimes people think, oh, if I only had this tool, then I could just do these amazing things and I don't have to like work as hard. Well, not exactly. Most of these things, like for me, I consider paste solder one of those things. It's helping me tack it together. Right. But that's not the end of the story. That's like the beginning of the story. Yeah. That's when we're just getting started. Yeah. We're going to go back with so many other things. Yeah. You know? Well, and it's, it's, you know, that's, I think one of the things that has happened, uh, one of the phenomena that's happened in the last maybe 15 years or so is a lot of times people are they're in a class and they're like what what tool do I need to do that and it's like what have you got you know if you're doing vessel setting what have you got around you that you can use as a burnisher because you don't have to have you know the a $40 burnisher you can use a polished agate you can you know glued to hot glued to a paint stick you know <laughs> Gosh, that's not I mean, you know, find, find what works for you. And there are lots of great, yeah, there are lots of great solutions for all kinds of things. Are you going to um, burnish with your finger? Is that what you're saying, Chris? No, I, it's a, like a knife. Oh yeah. I, the back of it is a nice polished steel and I wouldn't yeah. hold a knife that way, but I mean, nice rocker. if you have yeah, yeah. like use a, so there's a, there's a technique in woodworking where you create a scraper by burnishing over a steel, uh, uh, basically it's like a coupon, little cute steel coupon, like a, you know, a little rectangular piece of thin, but you burnish the edges over by running a screwdriver along the top of that edge to create a scraper because that edge burnishes over. So honestly, if you had a tiny screwdriver and that's all you had for a burnisher, that would work. Right. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and as a pusher and a rocker and mm -hmm. using the side as a burnisher and then you can yeah. sharpen it and use it to like lift your bezel if you screwed up and <laughs> yeah. Screw now her. you're talking crazy talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I so, think a lot of what you're talking about, Jennifer, is things sometimes either you have to go through the process of, of getting tools and using them in ways that maybe other people wouldn't expect or you have the privilege of going and, and learning from someone in person and get to watch the way they use their tools. Some of our cameras have made it possible that we can get more of that online, but I'm still a person that says, hey, if you get a chance to sit next to a goldsmith, sit next to an artisan and watch how they use their tools, you're going to learn things. You're going to notice things that you nev would never notice. Absolutely. And learn things. And that's, and uh, if you... Um... If you're familiar with like Matthew Chimney's uh, stamp work that he does, he um, has traveled all over the world and worked with people in on the African content, uh, continent and South America and it's the desert Southwest here and all over the place, learning how they did these traditional stamps and making them in this repeated way to create patterns um, and using things that, that we would be like, you're using a what, where'd it come from? It's like, you know, piece of rebar what <laughs> yes and it's you, you use what you have around you and that's something that metalsmiths and craftspeople have done for thousands of years it's not yeah i mean it's we've been soldering with you know blow pipes and candles for a couple of thousand years we didn't have you know my you know lovely smith torch you know or an oxygen it's definitely a little safer now <laughs> <laughs> it's, there, 
And for um, those of us with the arthritis or with, you know, carpal tunnel, being yeah. able to have some of the power tools, but it's like, it's, it's, it's all part of the process. It and is. It's it like is. being and able to be creative. To, yeah. And if all you have is, you know, the ability to do hand polishing, then you do hand polishing and then you, you know, work your way along and that's, that's your thing, you know, but yeah, I know somebody that they didn't have a torch in their studio and they got really good at doing rivets and all their work was riveted together, all of it. And it was beautiful. And that was part of their patterning, part of their process, part of their style. And um, they were like, yeah, I'd just rather not have a torch in the studio. <laughs> I mean, for decades. I used a butane, those little like culinary torches, nothing yeah. special. I used one of those for at least a year, if not longer. Yeah. Until I started getting into these like much thicker, like I was doing these flowers and I'm like, I have no firepower. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I think, but there's a ton that you can do with a, yeah. you know, a little blazer torch on your dryer, yeah. on a pan, you know, like <laughs> on your dryer. <laughs> well, that's how a lot of us started. We started yeah. like we soldered on our dryer. Yeah, absolutely. Just, Smart. Smart. Great yeah. life. I know people that have turned their washing machines into casting machines. So it's like, you know. That makes perfect sense. Hmm. Just do it all I'm not sure you could do both at the same time, like um, casting like and still use it as a washing machine. <laughs> that sounds true. like something James would do. It's well, I don't it advise actually, that. It's the but... motor. It's the motor that, that for spinning actually yeah. does a really good job job for centrifugal casting. It's great for that. Well, um, I'm looking forward to your class coming up. I hope that um, that you've got. It's about half full at this point. I think so. There's a few more. There's, I think there's about five more spots left. Yeah, right. Um, and if it does, I mean, if we get, if there's a lot of people that want to take it and we need to maybe schedule another one. I know sometimes I say that I can do more than I really can. Like I have this huge gap between what I want to do and what I actually can do. Sure, yes. <laughs> so I'm still, and there's like, you know, this weird mental space of like, yes, I'm going to do all of it. By the way, I have ADHD everybody. and I'm on yeah. ADHD medication and I have a lot of shiny things and I have three children and I got a lot of flower seeds in the mail. Well, so. the, I think one of the fun things about this is the, about the classes that we're doing is that they're as close to an interactive classroom as we can get without being in yes. one together. And I, I love the fact that, um, you know, when you're demoing, you can answer questions and, and you can do that kind of thing. Um, so it's, it makes it more like a classroom experience. And we've had so many people from all over the world in these classes that have actually taken multiple classes and then become friends and networked with other people, like in other parts pretty of the special. Country, which is really kind of yeah. cool. But, um, yeah. but I like the fact that the classes are small and you get a little bit more intimate, um, re, uh, you know, sort of interaction right. in an environment. So, yeah. Right. And it's been, I mean, people go. can just sit and watch if they want to, but they're going to get more out of it if they're actually doing things and we're doing it together. Because my hope is that people would do things and then have problems. Right. Because if you have problems in a class, then I can help you fix them. Right. And I, and well, we can and, troubleshoot and that's how you're going to really learn. Yeah. And you've got two weekends back to back. Mm -hmm. So it makes it easy for them to sort of like get the basics, understand it, and then come back and then and hopefully have some like YouTube. troubleshooting stuff. Yep, and then exactly right. Exactly we right. can work on that. And then all of those are recorded. So you still have the, you still have access to it, you right. know, and I've even had a few people message me and they're like, what was that one shape we were working on? <laughs> Can you help me remember? And I'm literally sitting in the car pickup line for school and I'm like <laughs> sketching it on the back of an envelope and sending them a message like, okay, it was like this. Remember you put your flyers right here and they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. That's what I was doing wrong. So yeah, you know, well, I'm, I'm looking really life. forward. I'm looking really forward to the class. I'm going to sit in with you and be your TA. So I'm real excited about that. And uh, I'm looking forward to, to working and playing along. Um, and uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, oh, knife spot. Chris says hi, and yay knife at your knife earlier. <laughs> and uh, yes, Ghost Town Metalworks says same. Blazer torches will take you pretty far. That's what she says. So there you go. Anyway, want to see my cool knife that Chris sent me? Yes, a, always okay, really quick. Knife spot. Here we go. <laughs> this is oh. my new bench knife that he made that's cool and it um replaces this 
really old, disposable. You know, every time I'm in a hospital room, I'm like, oh, can I have that scalpel that you're using? <laughs> and they look at me like, are you insane? Oh, you know, are you, do you this is sharp. I'm like, yes. That yes, one's like at least 10 years old. So this is my new one. And I'm, I had him like altered a little bit so that when I'm working with my, my stuff, I can cut. Oh, right. Along my, right. Nice. Cut my tape. Nice. It's nice and sharp. Nice spot says, Ooh, <laughs> I know. I love it. Cool. Chris, yeah. are those available on your website? Sorry, I'm totally bragging about your tools because it's just so much fun. So yeah, the, they look a little bit different than because you custom ordered part the back part of yours. Um, they're right and left handed. So if you've ever used a a knife that follows along a straight edge, if you're right handed, it works fine. But if you are if you're left handed and you follow, try and go a knife or along a straight edge. It's, the bevel belongs on the other side of the knife right. because you're left-handed. So I sell both a left and a right-handed version. Oh, that's smart. Okay, cool. All right. So I just, I don't grind any of them until the order comes in. And then, so every single time the order comes in, I, I custom grind that knife oh. for, for that. And it's made from an AR 500 steel, which is traditionally used in a bulldozer, buckets and rifle targets ah so the ar and the ar 500 steel uh is an acronym for abrasion resistant oh so it's a very very tough steel and you probably won't if as long as you're using it for this type of thing you probably won't need to do much sharpening or or conditioning of it my spot says beefy Um, so you guys, one of the things too, about the, the stencils, getting back to that real quick, is that you are planning to do like four releases of different shapes as you go along. So people can kind of mix and match that that's, I know you have the hearts out a few minutes ago. I think I, so the, yeah, the hearts, I, I think there's, we did a limited release of the hearts, only 200 sets made. I think there's about 115 sets left. Um, so get those before they're sold out until next year. Yeah. Um, what we'll probably end up doing if once I get kind of on the game of Tucson being over and planning for the rest of the year, I'll try and do some seasonal releases and some special releases like the hearts. So the hearts can also be, uh, put together like to make a shamrock or a flower because Mm, I've made dogwoods before with that same shape. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So, I mean, it works equally well for St. Patrick's Day and for Valentine's Day. Yeah. Um, but after March, maybe do like an April type thing and try and do uh, kind of hit the bigger holidays for jewelry design. Yeah. Um, the, and then we'll try and release that maybe a month or a month and a half before that event happens so that people have time to make their jewelry line for that particular event so yeah um but i know you've been playing around with some paisley stuff yeah. too we've been yeah. messing around which is a great like um, either shape. petal or leaf shape yeah. as well Amoeba. so there's a couple different yeah i really like the using the uh the peacock eye uh pattern for the the paisleys too that's always nice um so and ferns yeah. and all kinds of stuff yeah what so what once the ring band comes out this uh Saturday, right? We'll probably do a little bit of a slowdown on new releasing of things. Yeah. That kind of cycle through. And I hate to release like a new thing every week and people are like, I gotta order something again. And <laughs> can you add that to that last order before you yeah. ship it? Ah, oh, it's already gone out. <laughs> exactly. So I t- I'll try and slow down. Uh I'll be since I'll be in Tucson, shipping will take maybe about a two weeks or so before I can ship those orders during that period of time. Yeah. Um, when is the last kind of last day that people can order something um, that can be shipped out before Tucson? I would say probably five days before I leave, so the twentieth. Twentieth of January. Yeah, that that guarantees that I'll I'll be able to get it in the mail before. So I think cutoff date would probably be the twenty second. Okay. To guarantee, I mean, it'll be in 
before I'll try and get all the orders I have out before I leave, but I I want to try and uh you know give myself some leeway for things. I was afraid to mention the bumpers. Yeah. Okay, so I'm not sure where we're gonna go with this. I love um, them. I love we're them. We're just so much. we're messing around with them right now. I wanted to give people a little bit of a sneak peek. I kind of want to see if people are interested. Um, basically, I've been calling these bumpers, and I want to hear what Jennifer has to say. Yeah, Jennifer, <laughs> you know go you ahead. Think because you wanted them. Okay, so <laughs> yes, I love the bumpers and the reason that i love them is because i i really like to have something that's going to be able to like press stuff together and um and pin it down so this is going to be great for that however i really like the fact that i could use them as well as shims for uh spacing in between things setting them on top of stuff when i need to and holding stuff down so yeah, and the combination of these can be really, you know, really cool. So, yeah, whether you're doing, you know, and using them in conjunction with, you know, the other shapes. So there's all kinds of, you know, possibilities with bumpers. Um, I was also noticing that people were using the stencils kind of like nested inside of each other. Oh, yeah. To, right. to like create like a little space to, to make a um, particular shape. Right. So that was one of the other things I was thinking was if you have something like this, like you can use this spot. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Or so you can build your kind of build your own. Yeah. But you've got like a little chevron, you mm -hmm. know, you're mm -hmm. in, you know, something like that in a corner. Um, but yeah, I do. I really like the bumpers a lot. I like that they can pin down. I like the fact that they're the titanium um, and that they're, you know, practically indestructible. So I use a lot of marks and you can stack them. <laughs> yeah. Look at you. And yeah. mm -hmm. they're like color forms for metal smiths. <laughs> yes. You remember color forms? You could like peel them and stick them to the stuff and like, yeah. I, they're kind of like tinker toys. Like the soldering stencils are. are like tinker toys for yeah. I mean, yeah. like the ring, the ring band. That's, that's like a, Absolutely. Like a soldering Lego. Oh yeah, there, there we go. Oh, now you're talking my language, soldering Legos. <laughs> What? Here we go. So you do like <laughs> trapezoids, right? Yep. Trapezoids together, and there you go. It just has some more flexibility. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. just being able to really kind of like free play, and also for me, again, it was like, what can I use? I constantly, when I'm working, I don't like to like have everything completely pinned down. I want to be able to pick something up, yeah. solder it together, put it in the pickle, yeah. pick something up. And I constantly need something to keep my stuff from sliding. And yeah. so I'm like, well, this I way I can use a bumper or I can use a bumper with a particular shape and I can attach it to my honeycomb yeah. and then it will keep, you know, keep well, my stuff from using it even, Well, I, and I'm usually using like a solder right pad when I'm soldering. And for me, it's mm -hmm. like things will just, you know, roll away. And if it's wire, you know, it's going to roll. So having something just to keep it from rolling off and going yeah. in a direction while if you're you trying use to balance. I mean, while you're there trying to balance like a wire or yep. something, you know. If you use soft solderite, you can just poke things right down into it. Right. And so you can just stick your little bumpers or your little or your ring band um, template or whatever you're using. And you can just stick your little binding wires right down in there, your little pins, and it will keep it right where you want it. Right. Or you so can use hold it clay. Oh Jennifer, take those uh the chevrons out of that ring band and stick the half round in there, oh, right, right. In the, right in the center. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Ooh, nice. So, what what I'm or do yeah, do do the other one, that one. So, uh, just one of them, right in the middle. Oh, okay. And so now you have a frame that you can bend another wire around to yeah. create. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I just I got these and I was like, oh, perfect. That's I've needed these all my life. <laughs> so, right. So you're, you're looking around know. thinking, what can I use for these? <laughs> like when you get into these situations where you need something, what can yeah. I use? Yeah, that's our life all the time. Uh, what can I use? Oh, nice spot says um, your tweezers are off the hook. Love them. And it's very, very, very sad that they are in my studio and not in his knife spots my husband <laughs> um, 
So, <laughs> do you do you brag um, about how your tools are better than his? Because I do that with my family. Oh no, they the are better than my yeah, anvil's bigger it's, than your anvil. Yeah, I've got a lock on the door. He's, yeah. <laughs> And the tweezers are the tweezer name is fun to say. So you like take a look at my ta tweezies. My ta ta tweezies. I thought it was tit wheezies. Tit wheezies. I voted for that one. I know. You, well, it depending on where you put the space, it spells. Tweezies. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway, well, thank you both for doing tool talk with me tonight. I hope we do it again mm-hmm. soon. Um, because I I adore and love you both, and uh, don't ever get to. You never get to hang out except here. So. Well, we do hang out a lot on Instagram. And, I know. Yeah. and we're all in Washington. I know. It's crazy. And just in opposite ends. So anyway, um, we are really tool talk in Tucson. Tool talk in Tucson. Yes, please. Let's do that. You know, we have to make that an annual event. Walk sure. you around the booth. Absolutely. So um, just to give everybody a, a snapshot of what's coming here. up. Um, we've got, uh, if you didn't see Kelly doing her tool talk last week, um, go back and watch the recording because Kelly's amazing and we talk about all kinds of like uses for good sketchbooks and how we use them and what we use them for and I've got you know piles of them around here and um, how to kind of organize your thoughts and you don't have to draw and it's really good so if you're um, interested in sort of wanting to work on your designs wanting to work on your ideas um, Kelly can kind of help you get that organized and show you a tool that you can use for that um, the uh, prong setting with baskets I've got coming up on the 21st. There are still a few seats left and we're going to be doing some pretty fun. I've been working on all kinds of little stone setting examples that are like all over the place. Um, but <laughs> I just am like, and I can make this and you can do it this way. You can do it on the inside. You can do it on the outside. And yeah. I've just been going crazy with samples on that. So, so um, the, I, I thought of this the other day or yesterday or today or so with these guys. Mm-hmm. If you used all of those holes, you could do a cluster setting. Yep. Did you do that already? I haven't tried that. No. Oh, well. But that's drop the mic. I like the center one in my because I only have the prototypes. I don't have the one with the hole in the middle. So I didn't send you the center ones? No, uh uh-uh. uh. I don't think so. No. Oh, I'm an ass. What? Wait. <laughs> You're not. Wait, do I? <laughs> what do I got? Mother of God. I got all these little pieces yes! of stadium. I was waiting for it. <laughs> no. no. I saw so many inside jokes happening. Sorry, eyes. everybody. You're like, you going to say it. Oh, yeah. they do have holes. No, mine don't have holes. No. Oh, well, mother of but, but I do have prototypes for the things, which are like the fancier ones. Yeah. Fancy shapes. And then I've got these guys, which I, yeah, I'm going to, I'm like, there's my camera. There it is. Um, Play with and see what I can do with those. So. Yeah, prototypes to play with on these guys and for doing uh, wild shapes. But yeah, but that Michelle, do you have that that uh, window shape. Let me see. I, made you? I haven't had a chance to play with it yet. A window shape. Uh, you're gonna love this, Jennifer. Let's see if I can find it. What could it you be? Now you're asking me to find things post Christmas. Okay, while we, while you're looking, yeah. um, the alternative stone setting series is coming up. Julia's doing cut card setting. Um, we're going to do a curiosity shop with borosilic glass for jewelry. Mm. So uh, making um, things like uh, borosilic glass furnitures and playing with that. Um, tube setting, granulation, uh, the hammer hand piece, and the Lion Punch Forge Engraver Adapter is coming up on February 11th. So I'm going to be doing that then. Julia's got granulation. We've got marquee setting. Uh We've got the filigree class, the sketchbook for metals and jewelers, okay. uh, back setting, cuttlefish bones. So there's, we just added a ton of new classes for spring. So check it out. What you got? Let's see. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, I'm obsessed with window panes. And so... We're playing around with some ways that we can also make, um, I'm really interested in seeing how these work with granulation. Oh, nice. Okay. And I see a lot of these patterns in granulation. And so being able to put this over your back plate and then um, like the even using box. like flux to like stick it on. Some people have even used like glue, like super glue or different other kinds you can get. Um, 
granulation glue as well. And then being able to put all your granulation in there. Oh, smart. And either experimenting with soldering it like that or fusing it in the kiln or just pulling that up and using it as a as a stencil or like nice. using making texture or, you know, oh, kind of like when you do powdered sugar on a cookie. Yeah, yeah. With like uh, um, Argentium sprinkles or fine silver sprinkles. Argentium yeah. sprinkles. That would be a great band name. <laughs> We also just want to like make jewelry out of these titanium I wanna, frames. I want to so. be the lead singer of Argentium Sprinkles. Argentium Sprinkles. <laughs> yeah. Now my uh, we have a cover band that we keep talking about forming at uh, the place that I work called uh, um, Half Hard and Dead Soft. Yeah. I'll open for Half Hard and Dead Soft. <laughs> it's two different bands. One yeah. covers um, like. Uh, a Kenny G cover with a with like jazz, but like okay. doing it as rock. Yeah, and the down other the rabbit like trail. Half hard is um, doing uh, rock music that's that's not quite as hard as rock. It's a little more like fun. <laughs> well, if here's the thing, if if I do the whole lead singer of Argentium Sprinkles, there needs to be like a waiver and a caveat to actually going because if anyone puts too much pressure on me, I crumble. <laughs> Very funny. Uh, well listen people thank you so much uh yes thank you coming up. take michelle's class and uh check out all the new stuff that's coming out looking forward to the new shapes and uh that are coming from post your creations too if you have soldering stencils we would love to see them so uh -huh. post some stuff that you're making or maybe you figured out a cool way to do something we want to see it we love yeah. to see how Absolutely. tools are used in creative ways so yes. um Tag I saw us lady, on Instagram or I saw a lady that posted that has created an entire line based around with using the stencils. Cool. So yeah. Cool. Yeah, do share. Do share that on Insta. The Insta. And if you need something and you have a question or you get stuck on something, come find me. I might be sending you a sketch from the pickup line at school, but please, like, if you run into something and need help, let me know. I'm on Instagram all the time. And, you know, there might be a kid screaming in the background, but we're good. That's how we work. You might, you might be in, in line to pick up kids at school. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> all right. Great to talk to you guys. I will see you both later on. And uh, Chris, have a great trip to Tucson. And uh, Michelle, are you going to Tucson too? I'm hoping to be there. I haven't finalized my plans, but hoping to be there um, the same time that Renee Ford and the gang are all there on that That'd Friday, Saturday, towards the end of the show. Yeah. I wish I could join you guys. That'd be fun. First weekend in February. All right. Well, have a good one. I will catch you guys later and check out all the classes on littlemetalfoxes.com. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. See ya.